so here are few numericals uh, let's start with this okay so the first question <coughs> the first question is enthalpy of formation of methane at constant pressure and uh, constant pressure and at 300 kelvin okay is minus 78.84 kilojoule what will be the enthalpy of formation at constant volume what does it mean it is given that uh, enthalpy of formation at constant pr pressure enthalpy at constant pressure that means what value it is given it is given delta h got it so delta h is given minus 78.84 kilojoule yes what will be the enthalpy of formation enthalpy of formation at constant volume so i have told you that uh, at constant volume uh, if we talk about the enthalpy if it that will be considered as internal energy and so delta u you have to find isn't it so there is a like first uh, let me write this question that enthalpy of formation of methane that means this is you have to make the methane so how you will prepare the methane this will be by c uh, plus h2 isn't it so you make it like this 2h2 any problem in this so now if you are doing this here uh, find the delta ng this is solid and this will be gas this will be gas so find the delta ng over here it is one mole over here so one minus this is two because it is solid so we will not consider it that means it is minus one yes so delta h is equal to you have the formula delta h is equal to delta u plus and delta ngrt isn't it so put the value and you will get this delta u so delta u kill you what you will do delta u you want so it will be delta h minus delta n g r t isn't it so this will be delta h is given here minus 78.84 minus delta n g we got this is minus 1 and r is 8.314 so be very careful r value is 8.314 joule per kelvin per mole okay and we have this value in kilojoule so what we will do we will get we will convert this into kilojoule or you can do it in uh, joule in this uh, in joule okay so anyhow you can do so if it is 10 to the power minus 3 and then r value put and this t value is 300 kelvin so just a uh, uh, equation like this formula this thing you have to multiply calculate it and you will get the answer so this will be minus 78.84 and this will be minus minus uh, plus one isn't it so this will be plus and if you'll calculate this it is coming something uh, calculated eight threes are 24 so around it should be 2.4 something energy okay so let it be 2.494 so what will be the answer this is delta h is given minus 78.84 yes so this is solve it you will get um, 6 and then uh, 1394 and here it is 743 and this is 77 uh, sorry 78 minus 2 76 so this is the answer kilojoule got it i hope it is clear yes now let's start with the second question so there is a second question i have written and in this case the second question is written like this in a reaction at 300 kelvin h2 plus cl2 gas change into 2 hcl gas the heat content at constant pressure is given 185 kilojoule if two mole of cl2 to form hcl what is the heat content or at constant volume that means heat content at constant pressure means what it is delta h is given 185 kilojoule <clears throat> yes now um, what will be the heat content at the constant volume you have to so delta u you have to find clear now this thing for this equation this can uh, value delta h value is given it is not given per mole and all so that means it is given for two moles okay this is for two moles done so if i will take two mole of uh, sorry here something is missing if two moles of h2 reacts with two moles of 
it reacts with two moles of Cl2 to form HCl. So if they two two uh, moles are reacting, so it will form four HCl. That means it will it is going to be double. So are you getting it to four moles? So let me first find the delta H and delta U relation. So if we will find this uh, uh, for like this, and this will be four HCl. Delta Ng will be what? Delta Ng will be zero. Four minus four, isn't it? It will be zero. So in this case. Delta H and delta U will be same. Clear? Any problem in this? Okay. So now uh, this is for two moles. So for two moles, it is one eighty-five kilojoule. So for four moles, obviously, what it will be? It will be. One eighty-five into two. That means three seventy kilojoules. Got it? Any problem in this? Okay. So class, here is next question. In this question, uh, just read the line properly. The liquid benzene is oxidized at constant pressure. Okay. The change in enthalpy. That means this one is delta H. So let me write over here. Delta H is equal to minus three seven two eight kilojoule. Again, it is given in kilojoule. Okay. What is the change in internal energy at the same temperature? Internal energy that means delta U you are supposed to find. Okay. So for that, uh, first of all you have to get the delta Ng value, isn't it? So for this delta Ng you are supposed to write the equation, proper equation for this. So if I am writing this benzene uh, C six H six liquid oxidized in class. In the ninth or I'm sorry tenth only you have done this oxy combustion reaction. Oxidation reaction. So, can you tell me the product? This will be carbon dioxide, and this will be water. How many carbon dioxide? Whatever the number of carbon is there, that will be the carbon dioxide. And how many water? The number of this hydrogen divided by two. That means C six. So it will be three uh, three by uh, three. Yes, isn't it? And here it will be just add. This is six to the twelve, and this is thirteen. So six to twelve uh, plus three fifteen. So two is already there. So what I will write? Either we can write seven point five, or we can write fifteen by two. Got it? So I can write seven point five as well as fifteen by two. There is no problem. So now find the delta. This is also gas, but this one is liquid. So what will be delta Ng here? Delta Ng will be six gases product minus gases reactant. Gases reactant is seven point five. Yes, this is fifteen by two, seven point five. So it will be what point? Sorry, uh, minus one point five, or we can write minus three by two also. Anyway, you can write. Got it? Okay. So now put this value of delta Ng in the equation. Equation you have delta H is equal to delta U plus delta Ng R T, isn't it? So you are supposed to find delta U. So let it be delta U is equal to this will go, and this is delta H. This part will come here. Minus delta N G R T. So that means delta H is given minus three seven two eight minus delta N G is given here minus three by two. So put this value minus three by two. R value is eight point three one four. But what next? Again, don't forget about it. This is also in joule, but you are supposed to find in kilojoule, isn't it? So what you will do? You will multiply by ten to the power minus three. To make it kilojoule, isn't it? Into temperature is given three hundred Kelvin. So put this three hundred Kelvin. Solve it. Minus three seven two eight, and this will, if you solve, you are going to get this plus three point seven four one three. I've used the calculator. So this is the way. Okay, and now you'll solve it. You will get this minus three seven two four point three kilojoule. Got it. So this is the one question, and the last question, one more uh, last question we will do, and that is written over here that reaction of methanol. All these uh, questions which I have uh, given that is the previous question. Okay, of uh, J means an internal. So practice it. Which type of questions it comes or in that exam you just you can see. Okay. So now, the reaction of methanol and dioxygen was carried out, and change in internal energy was found to be this, like change in internal energy. Yes. 
so that means delta u is given minus 726 kilojoule per mole then the enthalpy change for the reaction will be what will be the delta h enthalpy change delta h and the reaction is given so for this equation you can find the delta ng so for this equation equation if i will uh, tell you to find the delta ng what it will be it will be uh, what this is gas but this is liquid so 1 minus and this is liquid this is gas so 1 minus 3 by 2 can we write or it is 1 minus 1.5 any minus 1 by 2 isn't it yes so now you have to find this delta h is equal to you have the formula delta u plus delta n g r t now you have to find the delta h only so let it be like this delta u is minus 726 plus and this will come over here minus 1 by 2 r value is again kilojoule so don't forget okay 8.314 into 10 to the power minus 3 and temperature is given what 298 okay then uh, you just uh, solve all this uh, 8.314 multiplied by 298 divided by half if you solve it you are going to get uh, almost it is 1.23 it comes okay so just add it and you will get minus 727.23 this is the kilojoule per mole this will be the answer for delta h hope it is clear okay here is the second question i have written a swimmer coming out from a pool is covered with a film of water uh, weighing 18 gram how much heat must be supplied to evaporate this water at 298 kelvin and calculate the internal energy weight is 18 gram delta uh, calculate the internal energy that you have to find at uh, internal energy of evaporation at 100 degree Delta H evaporation of for water at 373 is 40.6. So it is given 40.66 kilojoule. Okay. And per mole temperature is given 100 degrees Celsius. So what you are supposed to do, 100 degrees Celsius will be converted into 37 uh, Kelvin and that will be equal to 373 Kelvin. Isn't it? So we have formula delta H is equal to delta U plus delta NGRT. And to be very specific, we can write here vaporization, vaporization. Yes. First, we have to write the uh, equation also. A swimmer coming out from a pool is covered with a film of water. That means H2O is here, liquid, isn't it? And it is going to be evaporated. So, it will convert into H2O, gas. So, what is delta Ng over here? Delta Ng was 1 minus 0 is equal to 1, isn't it? 1 minus 0 is equal to 1. So, put this value and we have to find delta u so delta u vaporization will be equal to delta h vaporization minus delta n g r t so delta h vaporization is given 40.66 minus delta n g is 1 r value is 8 point okay this is kilojoule so r we have to convert it into kilojoule so 10 to the power minus 3 don't forget to multiply with this yes and temperature is given 373 so you just solve it you will get the answer uh, if i am solving this will get uh, um, around 3.1 yes 3.1 we are getting and hence we will subtract it so it will be 6 this is 5 and this will be 37 yes so 37.56 kilojoule per mole we will get okay and since delta u internal energy is going to be constant because volume uh, will remain same so if it is constant of for finding this how much heat must be supplied at evaporate this uh, to evaporate this at uh, 298 so we will use this again the formula in that case we have to find the delta h delta u will be used this and temperature will be given 298 so we will uh, find the another part so uh, heat or uh, we can write delta h Vaporization at 298 Kelvin is equal to what? So we can use this delta H vaporization is equal to delta U vaporization plus delta NGRT. So in this case also, uh, in this case, uh, see at 298 Kelvin if you will consider. So 298 Kelvin the water won't be vaporized because its boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. So that means in that case at 298 H2O liquid will remain in H2O liquid only. It won't be evaporate 
if uh, it won't be vaporized because it is written over here vaporization this can be done in two ways if we will consider this vaporization part so it won't uh, be there will not be uh, there will no what we say uh, gases state so hence delta ng will be zero and this delta h vaporization will be equal to delta u vaporization so what you got that will be the answer got it but uh, if we consider ki yes uh, it is vaporization and vaporization we know that it is below the uh, boiling point so if we consider that so then also this will be what we have to do delta h vapor uh, u vaporization plus 1 into rt we we have to use and that will be very minute uh, difference yes rt value we will multiply so here if we will consider uh, in this case if it like if we consider that it is not because here the word is used vaporization and for the vaporization what we are supposed to uh, use that uh, it should be gaseous state it should be at the temperature 100 degrees celsius so in this case delta ng is equal to 0 so delta h vaporization will be considered as delta u vaporization and that is equal to 37.56 kilo joule per mole got it so most probably this is answer because we will consider that only ye jo evaporation word keh raha hai to isko hum consider karenge we will not consider ki ha ye evaporate ho ja raha below that boiling point and all so let it be like this okay now the next question is the specific heat of an elementary gas is found to be uh, 0.313 joule per gram at constant volume okay that means specific heat at constant volume that means what is given cv is given that is 0.313 joule per gram yes okay if the molar mass of the gas is found to be 40 yani molar mass uh, uh, molecular mass 40 gram per mole if it is so what is the atomicity of the gas and atomicity can be uh, defined by gamma isn't it so gamma we can find and we know that gamma is equal to cp upon cv so we have cp cv we have but cp we don't yes so we have first we have to find cp so how to find the cp if uh, uh, we check that <clears throat> like uh, it is uh, this is joule per gram so to make it one molar what we will do uh, cv will be this is c let it be c specific heat and cv will be because uh, we have to multiply by the specific heat into the molar mass yes so this will be specific heat into molar mass and it will be uh, 0.313 multiplied by 40 and this is joule per gram and this is gram per mole now so gram and gram will be cancelled so now the uh, that cv will be joule per mole so this calculation Four threes are twelve around twelve point something. So twelve point five two. This comes twelve point five two joule per mole. Okay, so we got the CP. But CP how we will find? So we know that CP minus CV is equal to CP minus CV is equal to R. Yes, out of that CV we have R value. We know so CP we will find. So CP will be what will be? This R plus cv r is 8.314 now no need to convert it into any other unit because this is also joule per kelvin per mole and here also joule per mole so there is no problem so joule per kelvin per mole let me write the proper unit and this will be cv if we will consider this will be uh, 12.52 yes so just uh, solve this and you will get it uh, value will be if you will solve I uh, will not mention Kelvin because temperature change will happen here. So let it be. So this is twelve uh, uh, plus eight twenty. So it will be twenty point eight three four joule per mole, isn't it? Now find the gamma. So gamma is equal to CP upon CV, and CP is twenty point eight three four upon CV is twelve point five two joule per mole. Joule per mole will be cancelled out, and if you will find this. It will be less than two, obviously. Twelve six zero nine. Yes, sir. Uh, it is going to be one point six six. Yes, and we know that one point six six. The if gamma value is one point six six, so that means atomicity is 
yes atomicity of the gas is 1 of the gas is 1 got it yes okay so now the third question and the third question I have written over here third question is a 2.50 gram sample of octane C8 H8 is burned in excess of oxygen in a bomb calorimeter I just want to tell you what is this bomb calorimeter bomb calorimeter is the apparatus by, uh, where we find the internal energy and internal energy bomb calorimeter is a packed structure packed equipment so there the volume remains constant Okay, so wherever you see that bomb calorimeter, you have to understood that uh, you have to understand that it is CV value given. Okay, it is under uh, uh, like it is uh, occurring at the constant volume. Okay, this is the answer. So, 1.250 gram sample of octane is burned in excess of bomb uh, of um, in a bomb calorimeter. The temperature of the calorimeter rises from this to this. In a delta T, we will find delta T will be. 300.78 Kelvin minus 294.05 Kelvin and you solve it you will get <clears throat> this is um, so it comes 6.73 Kelvin got it okay so we got the delta T and now if the heat capacity of the calorimeter is given that means heat capacity of the calorimeter and I told you bomb calorimeter we are using so that means it is at the constant uh, constant volume so that means this value CV is given. CV is how much? 8.93 kilojoule per Kelvin. Okay. So find the heat transfer to the calorie. So Q we have to find. And we are very uh, clear with the formula. Q is equal to, yes, CV into delta T. So we know that heat transfer is equal to Q is equal to CV into delta T. So CV is given 6.7, uh, sorry. Q is given, um, CV is given 8.93 kilojoule per Kelvin and delta T is per Kelvin, okay, and delta T is 6.73 Kelvin. So, this Kelvin per Kelvin will be cancelled and just multiply by 8.93 multiplied by 6.73. So, it will come, this is coming 60.1 kilojoule. Got it? So, is there any problem in this? Yes. Okay. So, now another question of that assignment and that is the next question is here. We will do that. Calculate the energy required to raise the temperature of 12.0 gram of iron from 25 degrees Celsius to 200 degrees Celsius. So, let me find first A. Let me find the delta T over here. Delta T will be 200 minus 25 no need to uh, change it into Kelvin because delta T either in the Kelvin or in the degree Celsius always remains constant yes so this will be 175 accordingly we will put the unit it is heat capacity is given in Kelvin so we will put it in degree Celsius uh, degree Celsius given so we will put it degree Celsius only okay so now uh, this one is given mass of iron is given kitna 1 uh, 12.0 gram okay and specific heat capacity cs is given 0.45 joule per degree celsius uh, per gram yes like this it is given so here it is calculated the energy required so we know that q is equal to kya jaga c into delta t yes so here C S and delta T we will put but it is like molar heat capacity we keep it here C and C is C S into mass so we will multiply by this mass yes so C S is given how much 0.45 joule per degree Celsius per degree Celsius per gram mass is equal to 12 gram into delta T is equal to 175 degree Celsius so now the units will be cancelled out yes so let me uh, this is tech, degree Celsius will be cancelled with this and gram will be cancelled with the per gram. So what left? Joule only. So just multiply by 4, uh, 0.45 into 12 into 175. If you are doing, you are getting this 945 joule. Got it? So this much joule is required. 
uh, heat uh, energy will be required to raise the temperature. Got it? This is A. Now let's solve the B part. B part is said what mass of copper in mass this time mass uh, will be deposited. Wo hume nikalna hai. And a specific heat capacity is given in a CS is given 0.385 joule per degree per gram. Yes. Can be heated through the same temperature difference. Yani delta T is still same 175 degrees Celsius when supplied with the same amount. So we can do Yes, uh, we know that uh, Q is equal to CSM into delta T, where the here it is when supplied with the same amount of energy. That means Q is all same. So 945 joule CS is given 0.385 joule per degree per gram. Mass we have to find and delta T is equal to 175 degrees Celsius. So this degree Celsius and this is per degree Celsius will be cancelled. Same side, joule, joule will be cancelled because opposite side. Yes. So what left? M is equal to left. So M is equal to, can I write this 945 divided by 0 0.385 into 175. So we will solve it and uh, uh, solve 9. First, we will do this uh, 0.385 multiplied by 175 and 945 divided by this. It is coming 14.03 gram. This is the answer. Got it? And the last question of the assignment is, a swimming pool contains 1 into 10 to the power 6 liter of water. How much that is the volume is given? Volume is given 1 into 10 to the power 6 liter. Okay. How much energy is required in joule uh, to raise the temperature of water from 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. So again, again we will find this delta T. No need to change in the uh, degree or Kelvin. Why? Because the uh, difference is always same. So we can write 10. Yes, 10 degree uh, because Kelvin uh, degree Celsius is given. So that's why unit will be same. And the specific heat capacity is given. 4.184 into 10 to the power, uh, sorry, in joule degree per degree uh, Celsius per gram. You have to find energy required. So Q is equal to, you have to find Q is equal to, we know that CS into M into delta T. Now uh, CS is given, delta T is given and M nahi given but volume is given. So we can use, uh, we can use just uh, in this uh, formula and to find this what will be the uh, mass here with this formula uh, um, that volume okay so if you do this uh, we know that mass of the water mass is equal to kya hota hai? mass of water will be volume into density yes volume into density so density of water it is quite clear 1 gram per centimeter cube if nothing is given you have to consider this okay so density is 1 gram per centimeter cube and it is universal you can learn it and volume is given in liter so what we will do convert it into centimeter cube we have to convert so 1 liter is equal to 1000 milliliter got it and 1 milliliter is equal to 1000 centimeter cube so by this way, if we convert this liter into centimeter cube, it will be 10 to the power 9 centimeter cube. So this centimeter cube and this per cube will be cancelled. So what is the mass we got? We got the mass 1 into 10 to the power 19 gram. So use this formula, uh, use this value and we will get it. CS is given 4.184 joule per degree per gram. Mass, we got it in 10 to the power 9 gram. And delta T, we got this 10 degrees Celsius. So just cancel. Degree Celsius will be cancelled with this. Gram will be cancelled with this. And if we we'll calculate this, so it is simply 4.184 into 10 to the power 9 joule. Heat is required to raise the temperature of water from 20 degree to 30 degree Celsius. Uh, so I hope it is clear. Any is there any doubt? Uh, uh, here ten is there. So uh, just one second. This will be ten. Ten is left over, you know. So this will nine and one ten. So uh, that's it.
and I think it's clear. Uh, so you have already done with this uh, numerical. Now just check the answers and go through with this properly. So thank you, class. Thank <music> you.